Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SewSpar.com and today I am here to show you how to sew this awesome caddy. What makes this caddy unique is there is an interior divider that allows you to sort longer objects such as yardage of fabric folded as well as small items. And I have a nice stack of gorgeous fabric here that I want to show you how well this works. I feel like you could use this to sort multiple projects. Just to give you an idea of how awesome that is. Those cuts are two yards each, so right there is eight yards of fabric and I still have room in the side. So this is a really generously sized multi-functional organizer that is a blast to sew. We're gonna do a little mind yoga here for the interior. Bear with me, because I think when you get to the end, you'll see how it all comes together. If you are familiar with the T method, that is what we'll be using to construct this. The only difference is we're going to be attaching that divider at the side seams. So shall we get started? Okay, we're gonna begin by crafting the interior dividers. And those are made from pieces of cotton material that measures seven inches tall by 15 inches wide. And you're going to need four of those, which you will position them each right sides facing in a set of two and then you will stitch across the top and the bottom or the long edges of each piece and you will have two of those panels for your divider and you'll just turn that tube right side out and then press that nice and flat and I have pre-crafted my second tube. Then you'll take those two tubes which you pressed nice and flat and you'll lay them right on top of one another and stitch exactly down the center so that it creates your interior divider. Then your exterior and interior body are crafted from the same size pieces of fabric. We're going to be using my T method of construction for this. So for the interior, you'll have three large pieces and two small pieces. That'll be true for the exterior as well. These larger pieces measure 14 by 8 and the smaller pieces are 8 by 8. So you're going to take one of the larger pieces and position this divider one inch from the base and one inch from the top of that and then take that top layer and bring it in and pin everything in place. And then go ahead and stitch down the sides. And then you'll bring over your two side panels and position those to the right and to the left. And then using three eighths of an inch seam allowance, stitch down the left and right hand sides. Then bring over a second larger panel and you're going to unpin that top flap and center it along the edge of this second large panel. And there will be a half an inch overhang on that. 
So you want your divider to overhang that panel by a half an inch. Then come over to the other side. Same thing. Center that on that panel with that half an inch overhang. And then go ahead and stitch along that edge to secure. And what we want to do is working with the panel that only has the divider and the long piece, we want to attach the base to that, okay? So luckily I have a pattern going in the right direction, so if I attached it here, that would be wrong because my antlers would be upside down. So I just wanna turn that around and actually attach the base to the base. I'm just going to stitch across there, same 3 8 of an inch. For those of you that are thoroughly confused and not familiar with my T method, this is what the T method looks like. And this is what we've done so far. The only difference is we have our dividers here and here. So this is all coming up like that, okay? So th I hope that helps you visualize this. Let me bring this back over here. So this is the base here, which I need to attach to the opposite side and I'm just going to stitch seam to seam and now this is looking a little more like a box you can see I have that X running through the center and now I need to take the sides of the side and attach it to that remaining open side going to stitch from the top to the seam and repeat that on the other side. And now you can see the box really taking shape there. I have the divider in place and the sides, the base, and the front and the rear panels attached. The only thing I have to do is close up those holes at the base and I'll just stitch seam to seam on both sides. The interior is complete and I have four divided sections, I want to point out that those dividers overlapped the edges slightly there. And then you're going to take that top edge and fold it over less than a half an inch because you want to leave yourself room to clear that finishing top stitch. So this fabric that I am working with is nice and stiff, so I didn't need any interfacing and it actually presses very nice with just my thumb. If you are going to work with a lighter weight fabric, you will want to add some interfacing. set that interior compartment aside and craft my exterior which is made from the three body panels and then the side panels you'll attach your sides and then you'll attach your base and top to create what looks like a very large T then you take those remaining sides and you align them with the opposite sides and attach. And then you can see your exterior really taking shape. The last thing you have to do is close up those bottom seams. And I have a 
completed exterior here, I've taken that top edge and folded it over approximately the same distance as the interior edge. I'm going to bring that interior over and fit it right inside of there. I'm going to begin by aligning those side seams and then working my way around, pinning both layers in place. properly. Once you start loading in your contents, these dividers will take the shape of the contents. So now I want to add some handles to the short ends to add functionality to this. You can craft the handles as long as you like. Mine are 5 inches wide by 14 inches long. I also have a set of shorter handles here which are five inches wide by nine inches long. So it's really up to you if you want a longer handle or a shorter handle. I like the five inch width though, and I crafted this in the typical Sospire handle method with a little strip of Pellon 808 in the center there. So I fold that long ways, press, open it up, insert that, on in the center, bring the outer edges inward and press, and then fold that over and press and stitch up the open edge first and then the remaining side to finish. So for this one here, I have these two little shorty handles ready to roll, so we'll go with those. I'm going to insert those in between the interior and the exterior layers on the sides and depending how long your handle is will determine how far you would like that positioned from the outer seam. In this case I'm coming in approximately an inch. Just going to give me a nice little short handle. Then I'm going to go ahead and remove the machine deck and put this up on the machine and just stitch a very narrow top stitch all the way around. When I get to the handles, I'm going to back stitch to reinforce. And it is complete. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you would give the video a thumbs up for me as it helps me rank a little higher in the searches and share the joy of sewing with more people. I will be back next week with another inspired sewing project. Until then, as always, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Have a beautiful week, everyone. Thanks for watching.